Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. Today I'm going to give you a midsummer garden tour. Up here in, you might remember this as the toilet garden from last year, that toilet's right around the corner. We'll see that in a minute. I dug all this stuff out early in the year and transplanted it into the, the ditch garden there because that is in flux and this is going away. I'm not really sure. I'm going to have to look this up on these uh, Cosmos to see if they're perennial or not. And if they are, I'm going to have to get these out of here as well. I really like the Cosmos. I have some in the front garden as well. And I don't know if they came back from seed, which they really shouldn't have because I put pre-emergent in the whole ditch there. So I'm going to have to look that up. If, uh, if they're perennial, I'll wait till they're done blooming and starting to die back. And then I'll dig them out and put them in the front. The Rudbeckia that has popped up since I did all the transplanting that I don't care about. Uh, Rudbeckia self-seeds so prolifically I might have to weed some of it out but I did take a good deal of it out and put it way down in the uh, little blue stem garden. Oh, another GoPro crash. We're still waiting to hear from that Square Trade outfit um, to see whether they accepted our claim or not. This is really a piece of junk. If, if anything, I'm going to have to just get a new camera. Um, this is just super overgrown. But what's happening here, I, I got these to put on the back wall here, and I was going to put these two giant clematises kind of make them go over to it and then climb it but I I'm not going to do that I'm going to put these out front where I'm going to take two of the things that are out front out of there this year I have a, a dying grapevine that's going out and one other thing that's in the front trellis will come out and then next year I w well, probably in fall, when these die back, dig them out, transplant them to the front, protect them with some uh, heavy mulch, and then next year, hopefully, they'll come back real nice out front. And then I have this lollipop lily, which are really cool looking. So that will probably remain here. I'll just have a walkway going through here, I believe because that foundation will stop right in here somewhere, I think. I, I just don't know with that. I, I haven't laid it out yet, so. But that is the plan. There will be a foundation coming right along here. This, again, I don't know. We're going to have a road coming right from the main road down through here and connect right here, and this is where the shop will be. So it'll connect with the back of the shop. Got the mailman coming. Okay, mailman's gone. So the road is going to come from the main road, just kind of curve down and then come in and connect to the back of the, well, we're going to build a structure here and it'll have a back door and a front door bottom part will be a garage and the upper part will be a wood shop. Hopefully we can do that next year, but time will tell. The prairie grasses are doing really nice over here. I got to spray this area this morning. Got a, a few trees popping up over here, but for the most part, all that stuff is dying back and it looks really nice. So Next year, this is going to look fantastic, but let's get back to the garden. There are, uh, that is a, I believe it's a West Alice, Wisconsin, uh, fire plug from the year I was born, 2010. 
So, like I said, anything left in here that I want is going to be moved. I want this. I should mark this better because it's it's dying back. This is that uh, really purple columbine. I'm going to move that to the front of the house. So this is what's left of, you know, I had just planted this stuff last year. I really like lilies, but they're not native to Wisconsin, so they're going to have to go in a different garden. I would like to have regular gardens right around this structure here. So these will be moved as well, but I'm guessing they're going to have to be moved to a temporary location for a while. This stuff is basically just weeds now, all this rudbeckia really have uh, no need for it in the front. This I just let go nuts. Um, I'm not real sure if I'm gonna set that up again. If so, um, I really don't know where it's gonna go. Okay, here's the beginning of the garden. The very front up there has nothing in it and I'm going to keep killing it back until next year and I'm going to buy some uh, already established prairie drop seed and plant it there. Either that or I will try to grow it in the greenhouse if I set the greenhouse up. This is a weed. This is purple lovegrass and this is a uh, it's one of three tumbleweeds that are native to Wisconsin. But these grow into like a ball shape and are real cool looking purple. And then they roll away at the end of the year. So this is their first year. Hopefully it all fills in. I'm going to add more next year, but I got quite a few of them in there. It should fill in solid in this area. But again, a lot of this stuff is you know, takes a while before it establishes. Okay, we have this, uh, oh, what the hell is that again? I think I went over that. That that was a mistake. It had the wrong tag on it at the, at the flower place. Oh, I can't remember what the hell that is. Uh, oh, somebody knows what it is. Uh, Put it in the comment section what that is but it's a shade plant and it's kind of shady there so i guess we're going to leave it there this is the hollyhock her insane hollyhock that reseeds itself all over the place there's some down there again this started out up by the barn up there way back when we first got the land we planted this from seed from the one that was in West Dallas where we used to live. And now it just pops up here and there. A lot of the times we have to mow it down or yank it because it's right in the way. This year I let it go right there and I let a few go down there. And it just gets giant and it's going to have a zillion seeds. So it'll be back again next year. These grasses right here and there's one right there i gotta water that today i've been neglecting that is prairie drop seed as is this and that but i believe this one's still alive they're really hard to establish and i don't know if any of these are going to make it so i'm going to try again next year and possibly buy some established ones or I'm not sure how that's going to work. This, these are all spent, these uh, lilies, all spent, and irises, which are just about spent. And I got zillions of bees in here right now. We don't have any honeybees in this area. Um, honeybees aren't native to the United States, so... We have all native bees, and there's probably 10 different bees in here, 10 different uh, species of bee. It's pretty interesting uh, looking at all the different kinds of bees that are here. 
This is the June grass. Several of them either died or they died back for the heat of the summer. I think they just died because some of them are looking okay, like that one. These will get to like an 18 inch rounded tuft. So again, hopefully next year when these are more into their prime, I expect, you know, it's more like three years before this stuff looks its best. So I have to wait to see how that looks. Got a couple of them down here. I'll have to come out here later today and cut back some of this stuff. This just goes insane. But the shade's probably helping it a bit. There's a dead one back there and two that are doing fine. And then there's more in here. Yeah, I just wanted to dress up the edge here. And these are a cool season, so before these even start to bloom, these will be in their prime next year. I planted them, you know, after they would normally be in their prime. So this year is not really indicative of what they'll look like in the future. Let's see, this is a weed here. I'm not sure what this is right here. I think it's side oats. But all the other side oats is blooming right now, so maybe it's not. Maybe this is a uh, bottle brush. I ran out of tags, so I couldn't mark everything. And then in here, I planted a bunch of lupine in here. And then this is one of my grasses. This big monster right here is, I believe this is all bottle brush. This is Canada rye. Got another Canada rye up there. They're real cool looking. So once this is in its prime, again, some of these grasses are cool season, so they'll be in their prime before this stuff even starts in, the, in a normal summer. So this year is definitely not indicative of how things will be. It's just a starter year. Yeah, I really need to go through here and cut back some of this droopy stuff. It's just clogging stuff up right now. So there's one over there. You can kind of see the tag. Most of it is either bottle brush or side oats. I believe most of the stuff up front is bottle brush. Yeah, these are all the oats again, or the Canada rye. And yeah, this has got to be bottle brush. Hopefully this goes to seed at the end of the year and uh, drop some seed into the ditch and you know, that, that way I'll get some free seed that will spread down to the other gardens. Yeah, some of this stuff you won't even be able to see because it's all kind of buried, but in a normal year, I'm hoping it looks fantastic. And there's a swallowtail. Not sure what kind that is. I have to look it up. We get tons of swallowtails around here. This is a common milkweed. It's got a pod right here, a cluster of them. I'm going to tie those shut so they don't open. This is this milkweed is being transferred down that way. We don't want it right up next to the house because it is so invasive. It'll just be popping up in our garden and we don't want that. We're going to have a different kind of milkweed in here. That is little blue stem, I do believe. And that over there is little blue stem. And they, again, in their final form, these will be pretty big. So all of this stuff will kind of fill in the whole area once everything starts to naturalize. 
Okay, Cosmos again. Not sure what I got back here, if anything. Some areas, um, what I planted just died. So, again, next year, fill in any empty areas. Uh, there is nothing back here, I don't believe. Another milkweed that's going to have to have its uh, pods tied. I didn't plant anything along the side here except for at the very beginning and right there. This is all going to have June grass and buffalo grass scratched in at the end of the year. Let's see how that works. I planted, uh, oh geez, what is it called again? It's a rye that really likes wet areas and it's fairly damp by these tunnels because it's cool uh, right there. Don't know if it'll grow or not. What is it, riverbank rye or something like that? This is the purple prairie clover. Only, it looks like four of them made it. But this stuff will grow in like straight gravel, so I'm gonna be planting it along the front as well. And it goes really good with the shorter uh, prairie grasses like June grass and uh, buffalo grass. So I should have a bunch of this along the front as well. Real nice color and when it's in bloom, it looks really cool, especially again in year two, year three. It's another perennial. Uh, bluegrass, or I keep calling it bluegrass. It's a uh, little blue stem, little blue stem, little blue stem, little blue stem. None of them are doing fantastic. Again, right there. So hopefully they make it through the winter. I will likely just scratch in some seed in the fall right here. The cat wants me to pet her. Not happening, kitty. I'm working. There's yet another hollyhock. Yeah, they pop up all over the place. Sometimes I'll yank them out if they're not in a great spot. But once this naturalizes, I won't be doing much of any yanking stuff out unless it's a nasty weed. That is little blue stem again, and that one's looking really good. This is a weed, and that's a weed. And so are them up there. So I got one here and one there. They get quite large, but this whole area is empty. So I'll be filling this in next year. A mixture of grasses and wildflowers. I don't need any more coneflower or rude Becky, though. I'm real good on that stuff. Yeah, and we got our... Yeah, not only the bees, but we got a lot of other stuff that uh, depends on this. Uh, that is Queen Anne's Lace right here. And I yank that out whenever I encounter it because it's incredibly invasive. This entire garden will be Queen Anne's Lace if I let it. Some of this stuff, like that right there, not even sure what that is. The plan is once this is fully established and it's just tight with perennial stuff, perennial grasses and perennial flowers, uh, then I will come in and get like a pound of annual seed every year and toss it in. So between the annual stuff reseeding itself and me tossing some in, that'll fill it in with, uh, <laughs> it was a butterfly fight between a swallowtail and a monarch. They're going there. Oh no, those are two swallowtails. Pretty cool. Yeah, I got to get out here and weed, but not happening today. 
yeah, these big grass like this, that's a, that's yellow foxtail. And I don't want that dropping any more seed in here. If I keep it weeded for a, a couple of years, then uh, preferential plants will take the place over. They won't allow a lot of the weeds to grow. Okay, this is side oats grandma, as is this. Not sure what I'm gonna fill this in with. This is a pale purple coneflower, that one back there, that one back there, and this and that and that. They're not looking super well, but they are growing roots, so these will be back next year. These were on the, on the watch list. They're uh, not endangered, but they have a hard time establishing, so there's not a lot of them in the wild anymore. Okay, this is the side oats grandma. It's flowering right now, but as as it's done flowering, it, it droops to the side and all of the seeds hang to one side, which is why they call it side oats. And it is a grandma. There's blue grandma, side oats grandma, uh, and a few other ones. What a grandma specifically is, I'm not 100% sure, but I will be at some point. So on this, I've just been yanking a few weeds here and there to make a solid stand with no competition and then next year you can see it's already filling in really tight next year this will be just solid side oats and it's a very a very cool looking uh plant when it's in a mass planting like this so that's side oats and this is side oats and again, it's another one of those, a lot of these prairie plants grow very well in just plain gravel or sand. They're really tough plants, but they don't establish all that easy. So here is another one, which I believe this is bottle brush grass. So these are, are planted at the recommended spacing, the tighter spacing, and they've already filled in where they're touching each other. Some of them can use a little help, and there's one under there. And again, these are cool seasons, so they won't be competing with the coneflowers and rudbeckia and stuff in their final version. yanking out a pigweed. Yeah. I'll get back to that. This is the little blue stem. I mean, it's getting pretty damn big. I don't know if some of this stuff that's spiking up in the middle might be other grasses. I've been trying to identify them and yank them out when I got like, like this right here. That's a uh, foxtail. I just, I don't want it dropping more seed in there. This is a little blue stem, so I believe most of this is blue stem now, but be able to tell when it starts going to uh, going to seed. Like this right here. This is not little blue stem. That is, I believe that is uh, crabgrass. So I'll get in there and yank that out a little bit later today before that drop seed. Once this is really nice and tight, hopefully I won't get too much of that in there. Um, crabgrass and all these weedy ones prefer an area like this where it's where they have no competition and they have full sunlight. Here's some more of our purple prairie clover and so now that I got some of this stuff growing, I got a seed bank. It'll drop seed, and I'll get that stuff sprouting all the way down into my pasture, or my prairie, way the hell down at the end there. So, yeah, I got a lot of uh, 
this crabgrass right in here. You can see the funky leaves. That could all be one plant. If I yank that out, all of this might come out with it. So I really got to get in here and pull some of this. Yeah, you can see that it all lays down, kind of. That one didn't get too much, but yeah, I'll pull that out a little bit later today. So these are little blue stem. I believe these are all little blue stem from, no, this stuff back here is side oats. Yeah, you can see the side oats is all flowering right now, which is why they're purple. Got a little pollen coming off of it. And you can see they're getting nice and big. And you can also see that I, I got to get in here and pull a couple weeds. Yeah, the idea is to not have to weed this at all. At some point, whatever weeds are in here are fine. Just let them go because it's all just part of what would be here anyways. There is some more of that pale purple coneflower, and there's a big one in there. Which, it'll be interesting to see how, how that stuff plays out when it's on its correct schedule. When it comes up and blooms and stuff on its own time frame and not this first year stuff. So all of this stuff here is bottle brush grass, I believe. It's mostly bottle brush and side oats grandma this year. This stuff, the, this wild carrot, Queen Anne's Lace, has a chemical in it that if you get the sap on your skin and then that's exposed to sunlight, it can cause blistering. It doesn't happen to me, but if you're sensitive, it can happen to you. That's bluegrass, I believe. So, a bit of weeding and spraying the pre-emergent has kept the most egregious weeds at bay. This, this right here is, I believe this is, it's either crabgrass or, not quackgrass, but what the hell's the other one? But it's a weed, and it won't come back next year, it's an annual. One of them is a perennial. I can't remember which one it is at the moment. So that is about it for this. The little blue stem uh, is in its second year. So it's going to look really nice this year, but next year it will kind of be at its prime. I guess it's real prime would, you know, four and five years when it's fully mature. It looks really awesome. There's some side oats. See, I've gone through here and, you know, I weed and seed. So I pull out a weed and drop a couple seeds in the hole. So at some point, this is going to be all mixed up like that with with these cool little side oats popping up out of the midst of the other stuff. That, all that dark stuff is all, uh, that's bluegrass that washed in from the lawn here. At some point we might just take this grass out here and put buffalo grass in, a native grass. I mean, we don't use this area other than to walk down to the to the dry lot down here to deal with the horses so it's not a high traffic area yeah and uh, the moles just tear the hell out of it and this year we have skunks following behind the moles and digging up the tunnels to get grubs it's just a, a big grub filled year so they're destroying 
uh, lawn areas everywhere around here. I mean, some of them are devastated. They have like almost no grass left. So they got to be tilled up and reseeded. Okay, I almost started going to these other gardens over there, forgetting that this is a ditch garden video. So in here, I planted some of that. Oh, and I, I forget the name now, but it's it's for uh, really wet areas. If I remember, I'll put it on screen. But I don't think any of it came up. I got to come up with some kind of a plant for down in the bottom of the ditch here. But along the sides here, this fall, I'm going to scratch in uh, buffalo grass. Uh, Oh, what the hell was that? Oh, buffalo grass, june grass, and the purple prairie clover, just like right up there. All three of them should grow here, but we'll see. June grass does not like clay, and it's clay underneath this gravel, but we'll see. The buffalo grass should grow here. That's all nice, low-growing and it should look really nice and not need mowing. So that's why this I keep killing this back whenever stuff pops up. I gotta do the same here. And on this side, I wanna grow the prairie drop seed. So I wanna space it so that they're, they're touching, you know, kind of overlapping and they make a big mound. And they're pretty much maintenance free and they choke out pr uh, pretty much everything else. So they're hard to establish, but that's what I really want to get here all the way down. So maybe I can make a deal and have that greenhouse uh, prairie nursery, I believe it is. It's in Wisconsin here. See if they can grow me uh, a couple flats of it. I don't know if I want to heat the greenhouse this winter just to grow that and maybe a couple other things so it probably cost about the same to have somebody else do it somebody who has experience with it and can do it better I, I did not have much luck growing that stuff vineyard is looking fantastic but I'll do another video on that pretty soon so we have, well, back to this. Again, I need something. I mean, it's always damp. The clay layer is pretty much always damp. I want to get something that's going to grow down in the bottom there, but is a native to Wisconsin and can handle it when there is water rushing through here. I have to do some research and find out what the ideal plant is for that and I got to get rock in there okay so technically this ditch is going away this summer if we can get our contractor back here he had all his machines here and uh, did the neighbors uh, all that dozing if you've seen the videos on that but he had to go somewhere else so we are out of luck again Hopefully he'll get back and do it, but, you know, I really don't know. It's really hard to get people to do work out here. Got a little flower here that made it down. The seed made it down coming through the ditch. This right here, this end of this ditch, no real plans for it. Um, this is the big blue stem, North Prairie which is doing really nice. Uh, I can't, can't really jam this into this, but real shortly I'm gonna do some updates on the status of all the, the prairie grasses and stuff. So look for that coming up. For now, I'm gonna have to sign off. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and share the video, that helps a lot. Giving us a like helps a lot as well. Thanks for watching and have a great day.